1 Samuel chapter 17. It's the very familiar passage of David and Goliath. Many of us have heard the story from uh, Sunday school all the way up until hearing our preacher, our pastor, give sermons on David and Goliath in big church. And so I run the risk of losing your attention by bringing you to a very, very familiar passage. But I feel in the Holy Ghost that this is where we need to go this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 17, Goliath steps out, issues a challenge, and we, we break in to the scene in the story in verse 23. The Bible says as they're having a conversation, behold, the champion comes up, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines. And he speaks according to the same words. Now I want you to read the next four words with me. And David heard them. And David heard them. By the help of the Holy Ghost, I want to serve notice on hell this morning. So my title is not just a title. But it's a declaration to the spirit realm. And it's simply this. Goliath, Virginia has heard you. Goliath, Virginia has heard you. Would you lift up your hands all across this house? And would you lift up your voice? And I can feel the authority radiating from you. Would you open up your mouth one more time? God, by the power of your word and the authority of your name, let my mouth be your megaphone. I pray that, God, you would speak through me this morning. Let your angels be present in this house. Let miracle signs and wonders be made manifest. Let callings be reconfirmed. Let there be a mighty demonstration of your power. Let your prophetic word go forth, God, in the name of Jesus. Let it be so. Let it be done in the name name of Jesus would you say it in the name of Jesus would you shout it in the name in the name of Jesus would you clap your hands one more time unto the Lord Come on, I don't believe in just praying after a scripture just because that's what we do. When I pray, I believe that he hears me. And if you believe that he just heard you, I want you to clap your hands a little louder. Don't just give him an ovation, but give him a shout of triumph like you know that the victory is already yours. God bless you and you may be seated. He descended into the valley like lightning. He was giant in size. He was beastly in appearance. He was Goliath by name. Ferocious and furious, he continued down closer and closer to the people of God. Every blade of grass in his path surrendering to his pounding feet as he came raging aggressively towards the people of God. Shutters went forth. Soldiers, manly men began to shut up, step back, and sit down. But the eyes of heaven were not upon the soldiers that were retreating. And the eyes of heaven was not upon King Saul who was relaxing. But the eyes of heaven were upon a young shepherd boy named David. David was quite average. David was quite normal. David had a squeaky voice and David had acne and not everybody always liked to sit at the lunch table with David and and David didn't really have a lot of followers on Twitter and his Instagram wasn't all that coordinated and and he wasn't really a big deal just watching some sheep in, in the pasture and 
but, 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 but there was something significant about David. David was anointed. Can I say it again? David was anointed. I need, I need a little help this morning. I need a little help. I want you, okay, we, we don't got no help up in this house. I want you to help me. Remind me your name again. Gabriel, well, your name's David, Gabriel. <laughs> David's just like everybody else, but David's been praying a prayer, God, I want you to anoint me. And when some of you prayed that prayer, you said, I, I, I want God to anoint me. And what you really meant was, I just want a little touch of your presence. I don't want to be anointed enough for anybody else to notice. I don't want to be anointed enough for anybody to figure out I have a calling. I don't want to be anointed enough where I have to step out of the crowd. Anoint me just enough where I can keep my playlist the way I like it. Anoint me just enough so I can watch the same junk on Netflix. Anoint me just enough that I can, I can dance in the church on Sunday, but I can dance in the club on Monday. Because you see, if you ever, if you ever get anointed, then people, people notice. Have, 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 have you ever walked to one of your buddies, one of your friends, and you said, hey, I, 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 I think the anointing of God is upon my life. And they take a step back. And they look at you like you're cray cray. You all right, man? You got a fever? Are you sick? Can I just be real honest? One day I got a little bold and I said, I am sick. I'm sick of being average. I'm sick of being normal. I'm sick of being complacent. I want you to know what I am called and I am contagious. If you get around me, they're gonna have to pray a little more. If you get around me, I'm gonna ask you to fast with me. If you get around me, we're not watching that nudity on Netflix. We're not listening to those words. We're not participating in that junk. And if So when you said, God, anoint me, God thought you wanted to be anointed. So guess what he did? He anointed you. And when he anointed you, you're not always as cool looking as you used to be. And you're not always as popular as you used to be. Because if God is going to anoint you, your playlist is going to know about it. Your friend circle is going to know about it. Your school is going to know about it. Your professor is going to know about it. God didn't anoint you to hide. God didn't anoint you to retreat. God didn't anoint you to compromise. He anointed you to stick out and to step out for his glory. Bring me another water bottle. Hurry, hurry, bring me another water bottle. But guess what? You messed up. Because you said, God, I want a double anointing. God, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want a double portion. I want to, I want a fresh anointing. Did you really mean it? Because God has come to Virginia Youth Conference. He's come to, he's come to a convention session on a Saturday saying, did you really mean it? Did you really want to be anointed? Did you really want a double portion? Because I have come to anoint you. I have come to bless you. I have come to saturate you. I am looking for a man. I'm looking for a woman that I can anoint. Somebody hand me another water bottle if you dare. 
Oh, right here, throw it to me. You... That's half of anointing. I want you to hear me right now. Goliath has come up to the people of God. And with his mouth, he has been manipulating. With his lips, he has been lying. And with his tongue, he has been twisting for 40 days, morning and evening. Now, let's just be real. Who likes to be lied to? Nobody. Growing up, my mother told me that medicine would taste like cherry. She lied to me. You baby, baby, you just open up your mouth and I'm going to put this warm liquid in your, in your, on your tongue and it's going to flow down your throat into your nice, cute little heart. Okay, I trust you. And to this day, we still have trust issues. Because nobody likes to be lied to. But that's exactly what the Goli <laughs> That's exactly what the giant did for 40 days, morning and evenings. He lied. That's a total of 80 lies. I'm no mathematician, but that's a whole lot of lying. But you know what I learned about the adversary? Goliath does a whole lot of lying right before he dies. I'm gonna say it again. Your adversary gets a little louder when he knows his death is coming sooner. The adversary starts lying when he knows he's about to be dying. So I came to tell you, suicide's been speaking to you. Good news, it's about to die. Fear's been talking to you. Good news, it's about to die. Depression's been talking to you. Good news. It's about to die. Forgive me, but I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself. Something's going to die. Something's going to die. Something's going to die. So Davis... David's on a mission. David's on a mission for his earthly father, Jesse, but he's really on a mandate for his heavenly father, Jesus. God Almighty hadn't robed himself in flesh yet. He does, David doesn't know him by Jesus, but he knows him by Jehovah. He knows him by God. And he thinks he's just taking Gatorade and che Cheetos to the bros on the battlefield. But God has him on a divine assignment. I rebuke the lie that you just go to that church by accident. I rebuke the lie that you just go to that college by accident. You just go to that school. Why'd you let me be born in this family? Why'd you let me get stuck in this city? Why could, I'm telling you, you're on a mandate. You're on a mission. You better stand up. You better step out. There's a revival in your family waiting. There's a CMI waiting. There's a P7 waiting. Goliath asked for a man. So God sent him a man. You see, when the prophet came to David and his brothers, he came to anoint somebody. And so Jesse brought out all the men. And he left the boy in the field. But Jesse, don't you have someone else? And the prophet looked at all the men. And he said, is there not anybody else? And Jesse said, oh yeah, there's a boy. And God said, that's him. Because God bypassed all of the physical men because they were spiritual babies. And he went after the physical baby who was a spiritual man. I don't care your age. I don't care your... 
I want to know, uh, are you old in prayer? Uh, are you old in commitment? Uh, are you old in dedication? Uh, you may have only lived on this earth uh, for 10 years, uh, 20 years, uh, 15 years, uh, but have you stepped into eternity? Uh, have you got down on your knees uh, and said, I may be young in years, uh, but I'm old in power. I'm old in anointing. Uh, I'm old in prayer. Uh, I don't care about my physical status. I'm working on my spiritual stature. Help me, Holy Ghost. So Goliath asked for a man, and God sent him a man. Everything's great. He's on convention high. He's come from Congress, and he, he's been in the altar praying, and and, and he got a good godly girl's number. Oh, y'all wanted to shout on that one. Don't play cute. Some of y'all thought I was preaching against girlfriends and boyfriends. I wasn't. I was preaching against losers being your boyfriend or girlfriend. Let's keep moving. That's a dangerous subject. And so David comes to the battlefield and he's anointed and And he looks around and he steps into a losing battle. And some of you are about to go home anointed, but you're stepping into an environment that does not support your ministry. You're stepping into a school that defies your God. You're stepping into spiritual wickedness that mocks your experience. And you look around and you are in a losing battle. And to make matters worse, there's a target on your back. There's a target on your back. And some of you have targets on your back. And you cry and you suck your thumb and, and you, you ball into your Starbucks. And you have your pity party and, and you, you, you have Starbucks to cater. And you say, God, I don't get it. It's not fair. Why, 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 why did I have to grow up around this addiction? I didn't, I didn't ask for my daddy to introduce that to me. I, I didn't ask for my mommy to leave me. I, I, I didn't ask for my friends to. And God, I got a, I got a, I got, a, I got a target on my back. Why'd you have to let me go through that abuse? Why'd you have to let me go through that pain? Why'd you have to? And there's a target on your back. But the hand of God is on your head. No, 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 no. You didn't hear me. Do you really know what it means to have the hand of God upon your life? For reals? David said, I looked up and I saw everything seen and unseen. I saw the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies. And it's all the work of his fingers. So if all of that is what his fingers can do, what is his hand going to do on your mind? What is his hand going to do on your ministry? What is his hand going to do on your atheist daddy? What is... I need to convince somebody uh, before you go any further. Uh, the anointing on your head uh, is greater than the target on your back. The hand of God on your head uh, is greater than the target. The one that is blessing you uh, is greater than the one cursing you. Uh, the one that's anointing you uh, is greater than the one trying to murder you. So I made up my mind a long time ago. The easiest target to hit is a stationary target. The hardest target to hit is a moving target. When you don't show up for prayer, you make it easy for the devil. When you don't show up to the leadership meeting that your pastor said, I'm inviting those that have potential to come, you make it easy for the for the devil. 
but I made up in my mind. Uh, if I'm going to be a target, I'm going to be a running target. I'm going to be a shouting target. I'm going to be a praying target. Uh, I'm going to be a fasting target. Uh, I'm going to move. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to go. Uh, I don't have it all figured out, but I'm going to make them sweat. Uh, I'm going to make them fight. Uh, I'm not going to make it easy on my app. I thought he's right here. No, I'm in outreach. I thought he was right here. No, I'm in prayer. I thought he's right there. No, I'm teaching a Bible study. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Keep clapping. The preacher is fat and out of breath. Too much Chick-fil-A, no keto. (laughs) David begins to look around. Are you with me? Are you too tired yet? David begins to look around, and guess who's there? His brothers. Gotta love your bros. Hey, yo, David, we know why you're here. You're here to flaunt. You, You got little man syndrome. You're just here to prove a point. Get off the ball court, bro. Take your three somewhere else. And they're on the sidelines. They're not on the court. And David looks around and he says, is there not a cause? Is there not a purpose? Oh, hear me right now. You can be on the adversary side with your feet but on your enemy side with your mouth. I'm tired of brothers who sound like Goliath. I'm tired of brothers that say we can't have revival. We gotta have a new pastor. We gotta have a new youth leader. We gotta have another. Come on, stop speaking for the adversary. You ought to pop your feet in this house, but you ought to open your mouth in this house. And you ought to declare, Daniel, this is our greatest year yet. This is our greatest move of God yet. 2020 convention's gonna be greater. My next revival is gonna be greater. My pastor's next sermon is about to be greater. Cool story, bro. Thanks for the Cheetos and Gatorade. Now get back to dad. But watch what David does. The Bible said he moves along and he starts saying the same thing to new people. He doesn't change his conversation. He changes his circle. If you're tired of me talking about revival, I'm not changing my talk. I'm changing you. Delete. Unfollow. I'm too busy this Saturday. Hey, are you interested in revival? No? Delete. Unfollow. Don't got time for you on Friday. Hey, are you, hey, do you believe we could have revival? Stop changing your calling. Start changing your friends. Because the one who has anointed you is greater than the ones trying to approve or disprove of you. (laughs) Friends are not validation. Your father is. I don't got friends in high places. I got a father in heavenly places. And if he's pleased with me, it doesn't matter if you mock at me, frown at me, unfollow me, don't like my grill pick. It don't matter if you don't shake my hand. It don't matter if you don't think my clothes are cool. I've got a heavenly father that has his hand on me and I'm anointed for a greater purpose, a greater cause. I'm too busy to be petty. I'm too busy to be offended. There's a mission on my life. There's... 
I wish you'd throw your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost for just a moment. Come on, you ought to let your brother hear you. You ought to let your sister hear you. You ought to let Goliath hear you. You ought to let Saul hear you. You ought to let heaven hear you. You ought to let hell hear you. I need a young lady to come here right now. I need a young lady to come here right now. What's your name? Marari? Is God with you? Is God for you? Then come up here. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's a target on your back. The odds are against you. But what's on your head is greater than what's... What's coming on you is greater than what's coming against you. Greater is he. Greater is he. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. But, but you got the wrong message. You thought you had to be great. You're not great. Greater is he than lives in me. How do you measure greater? I need a guy to come up here with a chair. I need a chair and a guy, a chair and a guy. Philemon, it's you. I need someone who's ugly and big and can be Goliath. You're the perfect fit in more ways than one. Tried to mess with him, he didn't even laugh. You gotta stand up. No, you gotta stand up. Yeah, you gotta st- I'm a very trustworthy person. Right. Very trustworthy. There's a big giant in front of us. But there's something greater within us. So how do you measure greater? How do you measure greater? Contrast. And if God is going to show you a greater anointing, he's got to bring you to a great opposition. If he's going to show you a greater miracle, he's got to show you a great need. If he's going to show you a greater deliverance, he's got to show you. Let's stop acting like that our God is the same size as suicidal thoughts? He's greater. Let's stop acting like our God is the same size as cancer. He's greater. Let's stop acting like our advocate is the same size as our adversary. I want you to know he's greater. So the one around you, behind you, is greater than the one in front of you. Because the one in front of you, he has a date of birth and he has a date of death. But the one on the inside of you is the ancient of days. He has no beginning. I need somebody to help me. He has no ending. He never was born and he's never going to die. He was before your giant and he'll be after your giant. He was before your mistake and he'll be after your mistake. The one in front of you can be measured by feet and inches. But the one on the inside of you 
fills all time and space. Heaven couldn't hold him. Earth couldn't hold him. A manger couldn't hold him. A body couldn't hold him. A tomb can't hold him. And your devil cannot hold him either. The giant in front of you, he's been a fighter and a warrior since his birth. He's got past victories on his side. But the one who is on the inside of you, he's been victorious in the past. He's been victorious in the present. And he'll be victorious in your... Stop letting the past victories the devil has on you cause you to get condemned and forget the future miracles your God is about to do for you. Stop. The devil comes to you and says, you... Remember when you did this? Remember when you did that? And you, you. Come on. And I said, yeah. And remember this? Yeah. And remember when you did this? Yeah. And remember when you fell here? Yeah. And remember when you did that stupid thing? Yeah. And remember when you had that really dumb moment? Yeah. And it really throws them off when you agree with him. <laughs> and then I said, now let me talk to you. That was all me. I am not God, and God is not me. I failed God, God didn't fail me. I ran from God, God didn't run from me. I sinned, God didn't sin. I was stupid, but my God wasn't stupid. And guess what? He lives on the inside of me. And when you start doing the talking, I said, when you start doing the talking, when you start doing the talking, something starts dying. I would to God that there would be a generation that would step up and say, Goliath, we heard you. Now you're about to hear us. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered because no weapon that is formed against me is going to prosper. I don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities for the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down, to the pulling down, to the pulling down, to the pulling down of every stronghold. Why? Because giants do a lot of talking right before they die. But I've also learned that the saints of God have to do a whole lot of talking right before the enemy dies. (laughs) Because the only thing more... God, help me. The only thing more tragic than a screaming devil is a silent child of God. God gave you a voice. You ought to intercede. You ought to pray. You ought to worship. You ought to back the preacher. You ought to memorize scripture. You ought to teach a Bible study. You ought to open your mouth. Cup your hands into the Lord for just a moment in this house. Now I want you to watch what happens. God only needed one person to step out. And you know what that one person did? Brought the giant down. And then what did they do? Cut his head off. 
And you know what the Bible says happens next? The army rose. The army rose. The army rose. You know the ones that you have to leave behind? Sometimes the ones you have to leave behind are the very ones you're going to lead ahead. But God just needs somebody to step out, be a little weird, be a little spiritual, be a little different, be a little radical. And when you step out, you're going to start something so big. An army has to finish it. Your city has to finish it. Your school has... This is bigger than you. This is bigger than you. This is bigger. Somebody step out. Somebody step out. Somebody step out. Somebody step out. Somebody, anybody ought to step out. Come on. Come on, bring your worship. Bring your voice. Bring your prayer. People are coming behind you. Get it as close as you can. Get it as close as you can. Goliath, we have heard you. want to fast forward in the spirit with the Gilbert with Travis with the Daniel pastors youth pastors something's happening right now God is looking for key people that he can anoint key individuals that he can anoint key boys key girls hey let's stop right here let's stop right here Hear me right now. Hear me right now. Stop using your disadvantage to disqualify you. Hear me. I don't mean to be so scripture wordy today, but I do mean to. Goliath looked at David and he said, you're ruddy. You're a cute boy. You're not a fighter. But somebody else said those same words. The prophet looked at David and said, you're ready. Stop acting like your disadvantages surprised God. He saw your disadvantage before Goliath saw them. And he still anointed you. He... Stop letting the devil bring you new news. God knew you before the devil knew you and he still loved you. He still called you. He still... There's two things in the Bible that run to and fro. The Bible says that the devil runs to and fro. But what else runs to and fro? The eyes of the Lord. So before the devil could get to you, God saw you. Some of you are giving too much credit to demons and devils. I come to tell you, God formed you in your mother's womb. He so Stop acting like hell got to you before heaven got to you. God saw you, God selected you, God sustained you, God healed you, God forgave you, God is for you, God is with you. How old are you? 14. If you're young enough to be tempted, you're old enough to be anointed. The world's got teenage stars and teenage celebrities and teenage movie stars and teenage sinners. What's wrong with a teenage Bible study teacher? What's wrong with a teenage aisle runner? What's wrong with a teenage intercessor? What's wrong with a hyphen? 
pastoring a church on a campus. What's wrong with a young adult winning a hundred people to God? So I want you to hear me today. Life's not always been fair. Stay with me, girl. Life's not always been easy. But there's something on your head that's greater than what's on your back. And some of you have been through hell. And some of you have been through junk. But did you ever notice? David walked in with a sling. He came out with a sword. And see what I come to prophesy to you. I just, I just told you about our future. God's raising up an army. That's why this weekend is bigger than you. When you don't pray, it's bigger than you. When you don't fast, it's bigger than you. When you get bitter, it's bigger than you. When you don't listen to your pastor, it's big. Because Goliath said, if I defeat you, you're all my slaves. And David said, but if I defeat you, every single one of us is y'all's worst nightmares. My giant is your giant and your giant is my giant. Maybe your giant is lust and mine is bitterness. Maybe my giant is compromise and yours is casualness. But the giant that's after me is the same giant that's after you's. So when you lose, I lose. And when I win, you win. So when you step out, if there's an army getting ready, I'm telling you, God's going to use men and women in this room to start things so big. There's an army that's not even in this room. There's a barista at Starbucks, and she's part of that army. There's a mom and daddy at home, and they're part of that army. There's an uncle. There's a best friend at school, and they're a part of the army that's going to partake in your victory. Someone shout, I receive it. I receive it. Oh, someone shout, I receive it. I receive it. Now let's come to right here, right now. Some of you have been through junk and you've been through stuff. But I came to tell you, you came in with a sling, but you're coming out with a sword. God, I'm dangerous. Pause for a commercial break. I need you to hold that high. I need you to hold that high. This is Goliath, and this is the sword. The Bible says that there was no other sword like that in the land. And a lot of you want what nobody else has. But if you're going to get what nobody else has you're gonna to have to be willing to fight what nobody else will. God, why do I have to fight this? Why do I have to struggle this? You wanted a greater anointing. You want a greater authority. You wanted to be a soul winner. You wanted to shake this world for my glory. You wanted a double portion. You wanted to be a warrior. Some of you are looking at the very thing that could kill you, the very thing that could destroy you, the very thing that could murder you, the very thing that could take you out. But God says, I'm going to use the very thing that was going to be used to harm you, to arm you. Goliath, you're just holding my sword. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to I came into the valley with insecurity. I came in uh, with inferiority. I came in with addiction, uh, but I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm Goliath. I've heard you. Somebody lift up your voice right now. Somebody lift up.
up your voice right now. It's time for you to do the talking. It's time for you to do the praying. Now, 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 now. Uh, here's what's about to happen. Get the hand of somebody beside you quick. Get the hand of beside you quick. Quick, quick, quick. Get the hand of someone beside you quick. David, your brothers were against you. But in this house, your brothers and sisters are for you. And David, I know that weapon may be a little heavy. And I, may, I know it may be a little new. And people are going to criticize you for it. But we're going to get our weapon together. We're going to get our weapon together. I'm going to pray a prayer of faith right now. And when I say the name of Jesus, I want you to lift that hand in the hair. I want you to lift that hand in the air. And I want you to shout unto God. I want you to give high praise. And when you shout hallelujah, I believe there is going to be an impartation in the spirit. And God is going to give you tools. And God is going to give you weapons. And God is going to activate things in your life. And you're going home to defeat the giant. Lift up your voice and pray with me. Don't lift your hands yet. Don't lift your hands yet. But lift up your voice and pray with me. I pray over every single living, breathing person in this room. I pray over every singer, every musician, every Bible study teacher, every CMI or every P7 club. I pray over every single boy, every single girl, every single man, every woman. I pray over every single youth group, every pastor, every city. I loose your anointing. I speak against and I curse every stronghold, every weapon that is formed. And God, right now, by your power and by your authority, I speak life to every prophecy. I speak life to every promise. I speak life to every gifting awaken right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, receive it, it's yours. Receive it, it's yours. Receive it, it's yours. Come on, pray right now. 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 